you. We are about to get started with our mayoral forum segment of the night. I will be posing all questions for the candidates. Each candidate will have only one minute to answer. And I ask that you please respect the minute time. As you see, you are many. And we have many questions and we want, to be, we want to, everyone to be heard tonight. Again, I remind our community members, hold any applause, any boos, any yelling, please. So the mayor acts as a chief executive officer with responsibilities that include submitting the annual budget to city council, selecting a chief administrative officer, issuing regulations, and making recommendations on revenue and funding transfer matters. Beginning with our candidate to my very far left, make sure you tell us your name, and tell us what qualifies you for this role and what makes you the most qualified candidate. My name is John Malales, and I think the best indicator of what somebody says they will do is based upon what they have done. I've got a track record of action in the last eight years in the city. I'm the only candidate who served in the executive branch under Mayor Wilder. I served at the staff level as the assistant direct director of planning and development. I spent the last four years on city council. I know how to get things done, I know how to ask tough questions, and the mayor's job is a skill set job. The chief administrative officer, as our moderator has indicated, runs the day-to-day -day operations of the city. It's the mayor's job to listen and collaborate and work with communities and neighborhoods and city council and the school board and the school superintendent and the regional leaders to get things done. I've got a track record of doing that, and that's all I have. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Lawrence Williams, and I plan to be your next mayor. They ask, what are my qualifications? Well, uh, first of all, I am a product of Richmond Public Schools. I also have attended University of Virginia and Harvard University, but more importantly, I'm a registered architect and there's only three minority architects in this region and I care about minority business development. Now, why, what can I do for this particular area in this neighborhood? Well, when the new homes were coming up in this neighborhood and I was involved with Ellen Robinson helping her to develop her community development corporation. Lawrence was here. When the issues along North Avenue, the new homes that were being developed in the community, Lawrence was here working for you. When the O.B. Shepherd issue was being pushed and very important, Lawrence was here at those meetings. I look back on it and I have probably 35 years of master planning. Thank you, your time is up. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chad Engel, and I am running for mayor, not because I think I'm the most qualified on this stage. You can make your own decision who the most qualified is, but with education being the top topic on everybody's lips, I am certainly the most qualified to deal with education in this city. And as mayor, my top priority would be to bring not only funds to education, but programs, resources, and opportunities to the students and families of Richmond. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Good evening. My name is Joe Morrissey, and it's great to be at this Blue Ribbon School. With regard to qualifications, let me say this. Education, I went to UVA, uh, majored in economics, uh, went to law school Georgetown, got a master's in law. I have run three separate million dollar businesses, all successful, all under budget, and budgets filed on time. Um, with, I have voted on eight different $80 billion biennium budgets. I've studied them, I've analyzed them, and I've voted upon them. If I run for, as mayor, I'll run the, business, the city like a business. We'll focus on potholes, sidewalks, clean your alley. We'll actually remove, remove, remove leaves in a timely fashion. Cronyism and nepotism will have absolutely no meaning in my administration. And we'll do things efficiently. If we pave a street and we'll pave it in north side, we won't skip around a dumpster and then come back later on. I'm Joe Morrissey and I'm running for mayor. Please hold your applause. I'm Nate Peterson, and I have a plan.
which is something that a lot of my opponents can't say, as I currently have had a website up since about April 1st with a detailed platform on what I want to do to improve the city, while most of the candidates up here have a few blurbs, have a resume, and as far as I know, this isn't a personality contest or a resume contest, this is about planning for the future of Richmond. Recently, Terry McAuliffe vetoed a law that would have banned municipalities from passing their own minimum wage laws. This is the time now for us to pass a higher minimum wage law in Richmond. It is time to pass the law for mandatory paid time off for associates, for anybody who works in Richmond. It is time to pass the law that maternity leave, paid maternity leave, should be the standard in this city. We have elected progressive Democrats in this city for years and years. Every year we have voted for them, and none, none, of, none of the times we've had them have we ever had this, these kind of laws passed. I'm going to pass these laws. Thank you. My name is Jack Berry. My qualifications are I'm a proven leader. I've been the budget director of Richmond, the deputy city manager for finance. I've been a county administrator. I've run Venture Richmond that's brought you the Vogue Festival. I've been a regional leader. I've negotiated multi-million dollar water deals. I've brought revenue to the city for the biotech park and the, and the VCU engineering school. I'm passionate about our city. Um, my organization is the group that's behind the RVA branding campaign that's brought pride to our, our city. And I've been very involved in community for the entire time I've been in Richmond. I've served on over 40 organizations and boards, everything from the Urban League to the Metropolitan Big League, you know, Metropolitan Business League, uh, to the Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club in Churchill. I will unite the community around our priorities first with schools. Good evening. I am Michelle Mosby, and my qualifications are uh, simple. I am a business, a small business owner. I've had a business for 15 years, um, and so what I know what it's like to uh, maintain your business. Um, with that being said, I am the current city council president, and I was elected unanimously by all eight other council members, one that's up here. Um, I have uh, worked with the budget. Uh, currently for two years as president and we have balanced the budget as a council and so I am a proven leader. Um, I have uh, bought uh, different development uh, deals or work with different development deals throughout the city and so for me it's about being an all-inclusive Richmond, making sure that not one piece of Richmond is left out, no one, nothing unturned, that we are a city with one city, one message and in, that will be included in our budget. You'll be able to see it with schools, with police, with fire, with all of our services. We can't have one priority. It has to be all of them responsibly. My name is LeVar Stoney and I'm running for mayor because I believe Richmond is on the rise. But we find ourselves at a crossroad. Do we accept more of the same or do we select something new? I think it's just, oh, this election is about more than qualifications. It's about who will transform the office of mayor of Richmond. Who will transform City Hall? And that's what I've done in my past. When I was executive director of the Democratic Party in 2008, we won Virginia for President Obama, making Virginia blue for the first time in 44 years. When I was secretary of the Commonwealth, we destroyed a 100 plus year Jim Crow era law with a staff, full-time staff of two in the Restoration of Rights staff. Here's the thing, guys. We have a choice to make. Do we choose more of the same, or do we choose a new direction for our city? I think it's time for something new. I'm Bruce Todd. I'm an architect, I'm a businessman, and I've resided in this city for almost 40 years. I had the honor to serve on city council, and during that six-year tenure, I was on the finance committee. And I can tell you one thing. We had leaf collection, we had snow removal, we had a lot of other things in that budget. And that's part of the job that we have to do. As a, as a mayor of the city, we also have to look forward and we have to talk about the future. And as mayor, I'm going to be working to plan for our future today while I am working on behalf of the city. Also, I want to bring up one other thing and say, I believe we have to bring a business approach which means we're going to have to treat you as customers. Thank you very much. So you got to ask yourself, is 330, 
$330,000 new way of doing things? Is $100,000 worth of campaign money new ways of doing things? I've been, in the, I've been in the streets working for people since 1970. I was lucky enough to be a foot soldier in LBJ's war on poverty in the mountains of Appalachia where unemployment was 90%. That first experience has given me the tools that I've carried for 45 years as a lifelong advocate for people, which I will bring to City Hall. And that tool is people first. I will create, I'm the only one who's gonna change the system at City Hall to create a vision and process that brings the vision of this city to the agenda that then gets implemented downtown. The way it's been for 350 years plus is a select few downtown make the decisions and we pay for it in a lot of ways. Thank you and good evening. My name is Chuck Richardson. I'm a former 17 year member of Richmond City Council. I'm a United States Marine, a machine gunner in Vietnam, two Purple Hearts across the gallantry. I was the longest serving member of the Richmond City Council. I was on the Joint Housing Task Force, Chairman of the Transportation Committee. I was on the Regional Task Force. I served on 17 committees of council. Jack Bird was one of my assistants, one of the most competent assistant city managers for the city of Richmond. He worked for me. Thank you, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say that I am Thank you, your time is up, sir. the most experienced, the most knowledgeable, the most qualified, the most historical. Thank you. This question is for all the candidates, beginning to my far left. How will your goals positively impact the lives of citizens in this community? The problems in Northside, the biggest problem in Northside is, North Side, is the same as the big problem in Richmond, and that's income inequality. Too long here we've had incentives for businesses and not incentives for citizens. We've been basically bribing businesses just to come into Richmond, just in the hopes that eventually the money will trickle down to all of you. Which, judging by the fact that Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, has the highest poverty rate in the entire state, has not worked. So it's time for us to start taxing businesses with excessive CEO pay in order to reduce income inequality. We need to mandate the minimum wage hike. We also need to mandate subsidized childcare for all working mothers because it does us no good to have people not working. We need to do our best to reduce income inequality here in Richmond. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, we're gonna change the culture in Richmond. Everybody on this panel up here wants to improve schools, fix schools. But here's the problem. We don't have the right priority. Right now, we can't find $3 million to keep, car, uh, to keep uh, Armstrong and three elementary schools open. You know why? Because our priority is misplaced. We're gonna spend, or considered spending, $50 million on a ballpark in the bottom. We spent $33 million on a brewery, $15 million on a bike race, $400,000 to bring the second richest team in the NFL down here, and $200,000 to tell us that we ought to keep the, the baseball park and the diamond. Let's change the culture and reprioritize and spend our money efficiently by first fixing the schools. 
again, I ask you to hold her up. Change the culture. We do need to change the culture. And again, I'm a Richmond Public Schools teacher for 15 years. The school we're standing in here is to number nine in the state. The school I work at is number 10 in the state. When I started at Open High School, it was number 24 in the state. So over my time, we've, we've raised in the stature a bit. When I started here in Richmond, Virginia, John F. Kennedy High School was closed. Onslow Menace Middle School was closed. The school we're standing in now used to be Chandler Middle School, and it was closed. And in none of those times of so-called reconsolidation was the budget not cut every year as well. I feel a strong desire to fix the school system in Richmond by presenting a new vision, not by band-aid solutions, not by just fixing a budget shortfall, but by proposing a new vision for the future of Richmond Public City Schools. Thank you. I think you asked, what would I do for this neighborhood? Uh, I think I've been very active uh, involved in this neighborhood. I've already had involvement in this neighborhood as compared to a few of these candidates up here. But more importantly, a mayor has to be someone that is diversified, not a bean counter, not a politician, not a fundraiser, but a person that has clear nuts and bolts experience. I've been working for years, for example, years ago I worked five years with strategic budget and planning, making certain when Robert Bob was running this place, it ran well, and I was there with him at that particular time. So again, a mayor has to be more than just a bean counter. He has to be a leader. And in terms of master plans, I've done master plans 35 years for Manchester, and that place is booming now with Wallace Robinson Todd. Um, I was doing master plans when some of these candidates were just knee-high to a grasshopper. So I think I've got Thank you, pretty much experience, time. and I need your help again. Thank you very much. I think one of the things that we need to do on Northside is have a mayor that's engaged with communities. I think the, uh, the CARE program, community area revitalization effort program needs to be strengthened, especially along Brooklyn Park Boulevard, enterprise zones, as was mentioned in the earlier forum as well as GRTC, the three routes that run north to south. There's the 37 up Chamberlain, the 32 up north, and the 34 through Highland Park. But there's nothing east to west. If somebody lives at Six Points and they want to get to a job in Scott's Edition, they got to go downtown and then out, or they got to go up to 9, uh, get the uh, 91 on Laverna. We need to talk to GRTC about improving transit options in this area. And that, along with robust business development and hands-on attention, from economic development and the mayor's office and the council representatives in this area is the way you're going to turn this area around and improve Northside. My goal as mayor is to create a high-performing city that provides basic services well. That means mowing the grass, picking up the leaves, dealing with bulk trash, and getting a financial statement out on time. That enables you to have the credibility to do the big stuff. And that means uniting the community around public education, the school board, the superintendent, the council, and the mayor. I want to strengthen the Office of Community Wealth Building. That's an innovative pr project that the mayor has championed that, that tackles property by deal with all kinds of issues, including housing, transportation, uh, and health. And in terms of what that means for Northside, it means your leaves are going to be picked up before Christmas. It means your bulk trash is going to be picked up in days, not weeks or months. It means the commercial corridor of Brooklyn Park Boulevard is going to get attention. Why are there no street trees, decorative lights, and pretty sidewalks that exist in other parts of the city? I'm going to be the mayor for all of Richmond, including Northside. I intend to be a very hands-on mayor. I intend to go back to the basics. It's about city systems and services. We have to have city systems that work. City systems that are accountable, city systems that are effective, efficient. And if we have city systems that work, then what we have is services of excellence. And so I'll be a mayor to make sure our systems work so that the council person in the district, we can work hand in hand to make sure your services work. I'll make sure that we're building neighborhoods and schools. It's important that we have schools of the 21st century. And so I work to make sure that those things happen because they are a necessity for growth in the city. And finally, I will work to bring a, uh, energy and enthusiasm as it relates to economic development. We won't just say we're building Highland Groves, but we'll complete the projects. We'll do what we're supposed to do as a, a, a team in Richmond. 
It won't be mayor, council, school board. It will be a team of us, and we'll be working together to make sure that the citizens have everything that they need in their time is up. Thank you so much. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of the city hall that just works for some. It's time for the city hall to work for everyone. When I was knocking on doors on Maple Shade the other day, I ran to a woman who said, you know what, I worry about the house I grew up in. The house has been in my family for its entire life. I may have to leave the city because I can't afford to pay my tax bills. Or the gentleman I met walking Brooklyn Park Boulevard who said, you know what, you know why people don't frequent this boulevard anymore, this corridor? It's because I can't find parking. And, you know, we have people walking around. I can't frequent these stores because I'm scared of bringing my kids into the shops. We need a mayor who wakes up every single day worried about them. Not when it's convenient, but worried about them every single day when you go to bed and when you wake up. And as the next mayor of the city, I will do so every single day. As I walked all nine districts, three things emerged in every district. One was fixed government, the second was fixed Richmond Public Schools, and the third was fix the roads. North side, south side, east end, west end, all deserve that. Every district in my administration will be treated equally. But let me tell you where it begins. It begins with our youth, because with our youth is our future. So we have to work hard and become partners with Richmond Public Schools. We have to work with Richmond Parks and Rec to provide wraparound services for our youth when they're not in school and work with our nonprofit organizations. And finally, we have to change our housing. Ms. Robertson's right about affordable housing. We have to provide affordable housing in this city, and that's what we need to do. If you want to know who your candidate is, look at their footprints. Look at their fingerprints. I've got 45 years of working for people. I don't want to go to City Hall with my crew, my insiders. I want to go to City Hall with all of this city, representing themselves in a visioning process. Imagine the last eight years if everyone in this city had set the agenda on how shall we spend our economic development monies? What priorities do we have for youth? What shall we do with schools? Imagine a very different Richmond, because that's what we'll have if you choose me as your mayor. Mr. Stoney, you're meeting some people I've known all my life. I'm glad to get to meet them though. To know where a city is going, you gotta know where it's been. I'm from Richmond. You gotta know the history of the city. You got to have some institutional knowledge. We don't have time to really talk about all of Richmond's real history. You gotta admit it, let's face it, you're not gonna get any real answers here tonight. We are down to the hall fighting the issues and we shouldn't be. People here are not talking about annexation. You know the problem, Jack. They put a moratorium on annexation when we took over council. That's a real issue. You down there fighting each other on the school board over nickel and dimes. We should be taking the state to court to sue for annexation. It was the way we used to survive 35 years ago, 40 years ago. They took it away from us. We should be asking for money from the state because they took annexation away. It used to be for 11 times Thank we you. annexed. Your time is up. Let's talk about the real issues. The council hasn't faced it and since 1970 was the last time. Thank you, your time is up. Next question. What would you do to promote greater regional cooperation between the city of Richmond and surrounding counties, specifically as it relates to transportation and educational equity? 
I've been a regional leader. I, I was the county administrator of Hanover. The new Chesterfield County Administrator, uh, Joe Casey, worked for me. The Hanover County Administrator worked for me. I know these guys well. I think we can create a new day in the Richmond region working together and particularly on transportation. We've got to be able to get Richmonders to jobs in Chesterfield and folks in Chesterfield to downtown. Uh, I believe this can be a new day for regional cooperation if we make it a priority, get to the regional meetings, build trust and relationships among our regional partners, we can do big things together. I will continue to do what I do as president. Um, I currently serve on the boards with many of our regional partners. And so we are having discussion about uh, transportation. We're having the discussions about our schools and how we can begin to work as a region, how we can begin to work together. Um, I am the new fresh perspective that Richmond needs, but I'm that fresh perspective with practical application. I'm putting in work today. I'm putting the plans to work today, and I'm hoping that you all will support me so I can continue the plans tomorrow. This is Richmond, this is our city, and we can make our city be exactly what we need it to be. One city with one message from District 1 to District 9. I believe the office of mayor should be the grand convener of everyone around the table, whether it's a nonprofit, the private sector, or academia. But also that means being the partners with our friends in the county, in Rico, in Hanover, in Chesterfield. Maybe I'm just optimistic, but I believe that this is a region that can have a comprehensive transportation network. If we want to be mentioned in the same breath as the Nashvilles, the Atlantas, the Charlottes, and the Raleigh's, we have to fix transportation. Those who, who need to get to their jobs, or those who need to get home, need to find a way to get there. And the only way we do that is building a more comprehensive transportation network. As the next mayor, we have to make that a priority. I, I could have tripped you right there. <laughs> I'll try something. You're burning up time. All right, I'm sorry. Time. <laughs> Time's up. Uh, first of all, I think we have to take a different perspective here. When you talk about Richmond, you talk about Henrico County, you talk about Chesterfield, we're not competing with each other. We're competing against the world. And that's the problem that we face. We keep trying to compete with each other. And as your mayor, I'm going to sit down and work with the adjacent counties on a monthly basis, meet with them to discuss ways we can attract business to our community as a, as a whole. Because it doesn't matter where one business locates or another in one place or another. We all benefit. Look at what v VCU has done for this whole community, including Richmond, Henrico County, and Chesterfield. This issue comes down to the same issue that applies to many of things, and that's trust. And genuine. You have to want cooperation, not just say the word. For too long, our mayor has, has talked a different thing than his actions. If we want cooperation, we have to bring genuine trust building mechanisms into place. We have to listen. We have to compromise. We have to accommodate each other. And that is not an impossible task if that's really what you want. And as a mayor, that will be my first priority with the citizens of this city and with the citizens in the counties and with the leadership in the counties. You can't just say it. You have to want it. Repeating the question, what would you do to promote greater regional cooperation between the city of Richmond and surrounding counties, specifically as it relates to transportation and educational equity? Regional cooperation. I, used to, I worked for the Richmond Regional Planning District Commission for six years. Regional cooperation comes as a necessity, and the counties will cooperate when it's in their interest. We created the regional airport during my tenure on city council. We created the regional bus system. We created the, uh, a number of re joint purchasing. 
when you can buy a bus, a train load of toilet tissue instead of a car load, it's in everybody's interest because through joint purchasing, through economies of scale, you can buy it at a lower price. So when it's in everybody's interest, you, you benefit. And that's when we can uh, broker, that's when we can benefit, and that's when it's in everybody's interest to cooperate on a regional basis. And we have been doing that, and we can continue to do it. I did it on time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not only do we need to optimize transportation for people who need to get to work, one of the biggest problems we have in Richmond and in many of the surrounding counties is food deserts. People don't have access to affordable produce or grocery stores. They're forced to shop at neighborhood markets, 7-Elevens often eating heavily, you know, added sugar food, not good stuff. We need, what I want to do is start a transportation service funded by splitting my salary in half as well as the CAOs that will go to food deserts and pick up people and take them to the grocery store so they can pick up vegetables and fresh meat and produce and not be forced to eat this garbage they have at the convenience stores. I would love to extend this program to all neighboring counties, Petersburg especially. The entire city is a food desert and we need to have greater focus on this. Thank you. For far too long, regional cooperation has been considered a phrase, a dirty phrase. We don't want to do it. It works, though. Look at our multi-jurisdictional grand juries. They work. Airport Authority, RMA, even governor schools. They work, probably particularly when politicians' egos don't get involved. But with respect to transportation, we've got a great start with the polls running from Richmond to Enrico County. Let's incorporate our, our, our other arteries the Chamberlain Avenue corridor, Jefferson Davis corridor, and let's connect them there. Also, I think I'm the only candidate that re on this platform that represented 80,000 Henrico citizens. I've represented Hopewell. I've represented Charles City County. I know how to get along and work with other jurisdictions. Thank you. This is a great question because greater regional cooperation is one of the only things I believe can save our school system and lead us into a vision of a successful future. Uh, John Hope Franklin once said, if you want to get your house in order, you can't start in the present. you got to know what happened in the past. And if we don't know what happened in the past and how the counties grew as our school system declined and was destroyed, then it'll be hard to move into a system of regional cooperation. We need to remember cooperation means people cooperating from both sides of the aisle. So I would love to work with the counties to form a better metropolitan community. I would love to open our city for people coming in to enjoy First Fridays, our, our, our culture, our baseball. But what I won't have is the children of Richmond being held hostage by a squirrel so they can come in and watch baseball and then go home to their schools in the county. So if we're going to have greater regional cooperation, we need a true regional cooperation, and we need to spread the equity across the board in Henrico, Chesterfield, here in Richmond, and have a true metropolitan school system. One of the main things in our regional partners appreciate is money. And at this point, our bond rating, we want a mayor that can go to Nitty Hall, City Hall and make certain that our bond rating is respected and brought up to par. Chesterfield County can build schools with bonds and loans for $700 million today. We can't do that anymore. The other things that are important in regional cooperation is not just to worry about the dollars of a matter, but also how do you affect grassroots individuals. We can do that by making certain that the new pulse is a linear transfer stop as well. The second thing that we can do, and I've worked with the squirrels, is to make certain that they are on the boulevard, but they're at sports backers' property, and that saves the taxpayers tons of money and open that up for economic development so that we will have more dollars for our schools. A good mayor can do that, quietly get it done, and not take five years. Thank you. Questions about regional cooperation, especially as in regards to transportation. I think the way you build regional cooperation, the way you start, is you pick up the phone and you talk to each other. And when you talk to each other, you listen to each other. And when you listen, you learn. And there is a group out there called RVA Rapid Transit that has developed a vision of how to connect people in the city to jobs in the counties and get people in the counties if they want to come into the city. That's the starting point in my mind. That's where the next mayor needs to pick up 
the conversation. Henrico's pretty close to talking about expanding transit. Chesterfield's probably a, a, another story, but you start with hitting singles first. Start getting people to jobs, start getting them to educational opportunities, to, to night school out at uh, ECPI, uh, Short Pump, or the UVA and Virginia Tech Joint Center out in Henrico County. Those are the opportunities that people need in the city, and that's where it has to start. It has to start with picking up the phone and building a level of trust with the region to make sure that we can hit these singles and get this done. It's going to take a while, but we can do it. Thank you. I believe we have time for one final question. I'd like to start right where you are, Bill, right there. And we'll just come straight down the line. What are your plans to bring transparency, integrity, and to restore the community trust in this office? I'm gonna repeat it. What are your plans to bring transparency, integrity, and to restore the community trust to this office? Well, I've already started. And it started with, a year and a half ago, passing an ordinance that I introduced to city council. Every check that the city writes is online. Two months ago, the city now has to post all the financial data that's included in the report, the comprehensive annual financial report that's been late for the last three years under this mayor. Now, the, the finance department and the city has to post that every month. If it's gonna be late, we're gonna know it well in advance. So far, the new finance director, who's doing a very good job with very limited resources, has posted the last two months. So we know we should be in good shape in November and years moving forward. I think that is a good start. It needs to be built upon. There's no question that transparency and accountability have to be improved at City Hall. My record speaks for itself. I've already started doing that and it will continue. There will be no confidentiality agreements in my administration, ever. I too strongly believe that the average citizen should be able to pick up their laptop and also see every department's ledger and on that ledger clearly indicating what's happening in that department so we have an oversight. Years ago I worked with Robert Bobbin. We also had a, a budget oversight committee and I think that's important to do. But we also not only need oversight on the dollars and the bean counting, we also need oversight on where we're headed. A good mayor can do that. My inspiration is Harvey Gant in Charlotte. Charlotte was in the same place we are years and years ago. He was an Afro-American architect that was mayor of that town, and we remember when Charlotte was not as great as Richmond. Well, I think that I can do equally as well as he did and bring this city to a future that would be unbelievable with greenways and working with our community, resolving the public housing issue in a sensitive manner as an Afro-American male man. I think that I can do that better than most here given my history with this city. I really need your help. This is Lawrence Williams, architect, and I do love you. Thank you. I've taught ethics many times over the years. I'm certified by the state of Virginia to teach ethics. And I believe at City Hall, we do need integrity and transparency. The, the transparency level at City Hall is incredibly low today, and if I was mayor, I would weekly hold press conferences, I would answer questions the citizens have, I would reach out on social media and have people reach back in ways that mayors of other cities have done to keep people up to date and have their opinions in a, in a very quick fashion. So I, I believe that we need int integrity down there. I myself am, am full of integrity. You can look at my career, my life is an open book, Google me, you see. Thank you. Thank you. With respect to transparency, a former Supreme Court Justice once said, sunshine, sunshine is the best disinfectant. In my administration, we will have lots of sunshine. Take this district over here, the Brooklyn Park Boulevard corridor. Enterprise zone opportunities and grants weren't made available to everybody. We had one business that had an opportunity to receive $120,000. That wasn't made available to other businesses on the Brooklyn Park corridor. The other thing is when I see something that is wrong or right, I'll speak out. I haven't been reticent to do that in the past. I'll start now. One of the best lines so far has been my colleague, my candidate, Jack Berry. Jack, you said early on that the first dollar will go into education, not the last. Great line, and it's good. With regard to, I'm a Democrat. 
I don't think anybody else up here will criticize a Democratic governor. I will. Governor McAuliffe encouraged our mayor Thank you, to your give time food. is up. I was just about to get a good one. The timekeeper is no respecter of persons. <laughs> I like John's idea. I also, in terms of transp in terms of restoring trust, this current mayor has taken a double salary. Not only the salary he takes from the city, but the salary he takes from his church. I want to cut the salary in half because I think you've been duped for the last eight years, paying double for crappy service. So we will use that money, the half of my salary, the half of the CAOs, on you, on the transportation service to take people in food deserts to the grocery store, to pay for college coursework in local prisons to better rehabilitate prisoners. We will also pay to house the homeless. Rapid rehousing like they have done in Utah has effectively eliminated homelessness, and we're going to do that here in order to effectively eliminate homelessness in Richmond. Thank you. Richmond deserves a mayor you can trust. You can't do anything about uni uniting the community if you don't have the trust of the public. That starts with making sure there are no cronies in City Hall, that everybody that's in City Hall is there because of their ability and not because of who they know or what church they go to. It means that every deal has got to be transparent. If you don't build trust, you can't bring partners, you can't unite the community around our biggest issues such as schools. And I'm going to give 15 seconds of my time to Joe. You're gracious, Jack. Excuse me. Yes. Time Don't you want to know why I'm going to criticize the governor? May I ask that the mic be respectfully handed to Ms. Mosby? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at the end of the day, I am not a politician. I am someone that just would like to serve. And so I will restore the, the sense of trust in Richmond. We have a government that has to be transparent, and I will be that. I will work with council, district to district. We can have dialogue, because that's what I believe that, as a mayor, we have to do. I've watched, uh, and I'm going to say Dr. Baird, and I think he does it very well. He goes from district to district. I'm saying to you, as your mayor, that's what I'll do. You'll have an opportunity to ask me the hard questions and get the real answers. I won't fabricate things so that it sounds good. I'll give you true, real facts as your mayor. Michelle Mosby for RVA Mayor. No, frankly, I think it starts with your commitment to the people. On the first day I got in this race, I said I'd be a hands-on, visible, and transparent government. Transparent man. <laughs> <laughs> but also, but also, my commitment to the people is, I will not embarrass you. I'm not going to be on the front page for something controversial, uncomplimentary, scandalous. You have my commitment to that. I don't. I love this city. The last thing I will do is embarrass the city. I guarantee you that. Um, I, I'm Bruce Tyler, and I'm running for mayor. <laughs> Not governor. This is my last job interview, okay? This is my last job interview. First of all, it's going to begin with me, trust. Because the leader of the organization has to be trustworthy. And I think that's one thing I've been my entire life. I'm very blessed to have had parents taught me the meaning of honor, respect, responsibility, caring, and the values that make a difference. 15 seconds. No, 30 seconds. But, what, but, but the other thing is, I'm going to be accessible. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the police detail. Because I want every citizen to be able to walk up to me and talk to me as if I'm a person and not a king. I want to be the people's mayor. I want to work for you. That's why I'm running. So transparency, it's a funny kind of word. 
because some candidates don't even carry their own petitions. They hire it done. Some candidates vote for $1.75 million in wiping out a tax bill for the elites on the Performing Arts Center. There's a lot of transparency promises, but there's nobody that's going to give you the transparency that I will, because you'll be involved in the process of creating a new Richmond yourselves. The door will be open. I will be at every council meeting. There will be district-wide meetings where I will come out to the districts and I will sit down. We'll create a visioning process that your needs, your desires, what do you want, what's highest and best for us collectively is what we as a city are doing. And you won't have to find them out afterwards because you'll be part of crafting a new ritual with me as your mayor. And by the way, my name is Alan Chinsius. Thank you, I gotta talk fast. Almost 40 years ago, I was young, handsome, and naive. And I learned something. I learned I could stand up here and tell you anything. Because the mouth will say anything. But you judge what I do. When I get elected, the press corps will come back to the city hall. The city hall used to have a press room. They took it out. The press, you will have a room in the city hall where you will stay there. And when the press is in the city hall, you have to watch the mayor. You will be able to have cameras. You will know what's going on in the city hall. I will have a press conference quarterly. There will be open amendments to the budget. There will be a press conference on a basis whenever there's a major issue. I will believe in the sunshine Thank you. Law. Your time is up. Thank you. That's action, not words, because the mouth will say Thank anything. You. Your time is up. Let's give all of our candidates a round of applause. That concludes our forum for this evening. We thank all of our candidates. We thank our host, Richmond Community High School and the Brooklyn Park Area Association. Most of all, thank you, Northside, for coming out tonight. Please take the time to greet our candidates personally as you leave.